Hello everyone, Pally Time here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. We joined Dungan on his Honor Mode playthrough back at camp today. Before we jump into today's episode, thank you guys so much for your patience. I've often said that YouTube is a job where you're constantly spinning all of your plates, trying to keep everything going. Well, all of my plates have officially crashed onto the floor, and we gotta get the show back up and running again. Thank you for your patience, I appreciate it. Today's episode is the first YouTube video ever that I am releasing in 2K resolutions. We've been doing 1080p for well over a decade now. This is my first move up towards an even higher resolution. I have a 2K monitor, but sometimes running games at that higher resolution can be a little bit too demanding. Even with the higher resolution, Baldur's Gate is running at 130 FPS right now. Significantly more than what I can give you on YouTube. So hopefully everything continues to look okay here, and we have a nice quality increase for you guys. One thing I noticed as I was zooming around the camp is we actually have a shrine to the absolute where we lay our head to sleep at night. I've never seen that before in Baldur's Gate. That is very, very cool. I wonder if this was installed after the goblin party or something like that. Well, in the last episode, we went to Grim Forge, forged a new piece of heavy armor for Lazel, as well as a shield for our swirly, really cleric Shadow Hearts. And now I think it's time for us to lay our head down and rest for the night. I always like to show you guys when we rest because, of course, sometimes there's story elements that we don't want to miss. Hey, little buddy. You're still here, huh? Well, I guess last time we saw him. Leg, revealing <gasps> a ragged wound. Oh, no. I do have healing spells. Why does Duncan look so mischievous right now? It's because I have the UI turned off, maybe? No, he just did it. I didn't even have to tell him. Medicine, attempt to heal the injury. We have an okay roll at that. We need a 10. We rolled a 17. Come here, little buddy. As the wound closes, the cub begins testing his weight on the leg. There you go. How's that feel? <laughs> Adorable. Let me know when it brings you something fresh. Go back to sleep or meditate or whatever it is you do. Don't mess with my new friend. It's still the middle of the night, so we have to go back to bed again, but luckily no food used this time. That baby owlbear cub showed up at our base and I was a little confused because I never fought the mom. I think what that means is that the spear in the mom's eye had to have been lethal, right? How you doing, she pal? said she's had worse injuries, but she's clearly passed on, so something didn't go well. I'm going to start today off by binding, buying some potions from my favorite goblin vendor. I went to camp right here. I went back after the last episode just to sell some stuff to him before we settled down. So, our party is off on another grand adventure. As always, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you do, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And let's see what kind of trouble we can get into today. Oh, bro, one thing I never noticed about this fight here at the Goblin Checkpoint. These wooden supports have a health bar. You can knock the high ground person off of that and into the fight. Nice job pushing that all out of your way, Dungan. <laughs> so our party right now is level 5 and a little over halfway to that level 6 marker. Swords Bard gain an additional attack once they hit level 6. It's delayed a little bit. So once I do hit that level six goal, that's when I'm gonna swap out to our Bow of the Banshee and actually start using that as our main weapon. Because until then, we're firing off two shots per turn with our hand crossbows, which is kind of superior to a single shot with a, a, you know, a regular bow. So in order to get some more XP, I kind of want to clear out the act and I'm, I'm assessing what risks I feel like taking right now. And I think the easiest one for us to do would be the well. The overgrowth of moss. The well looks unremarkable. Uh, peer into the well and investigate it. Uh, with a bonus to guidance, we should be able to investigate this pretty well, but we did not. And I'm definitely not going to use an inspiration on that. Dry stones line the wall, but the darkness below is impenetrable. 
well throw a coin in. The coin disappears into the well. After a moment, you hear a soft clink, not a splash. Climb down the bucket rope. I like how just throwing your money down there gives you enough reason to go after it. Giant so, webs. They'll hmm. alert their spinners with a mere touch. Dungan climbs onto the bucket and makes his way down to the bottom of the well. We begin to see spider webs across every surface down here, and I definitely need to be looting on someone with more strength. Lazel is going to head in first. Of course, we've been down here before. I was debating coming down here earlier because there's a little trick you can do with some of the mushroom men to get the main boss at the end of this path as a pet. So I was considering doing that earlier, but the cards didn't play out that way. There are some bloody journals down here, and I believe one of these journals belongs to one of the people we've already killed. But I guess that's a story for another day. In a chest, we just found these boots. Immune to being in webbed, your movement speed is not affected by web surfaces. I'm going to give those to Lazel, and I equipped the Nightwalkers on Dungan, so he has a very similar effect right now. This place is full of webs, so if we can move around them more easily, that's going to make our life much easier. Now, I don't know what level these guys are, but I'm thinking I should have a pretty good advantage. The spider web itself has 12 HP. Okay, these guys are level three, so we should plow through this pretty quick. I'm gonna have everyone get down. Lazelle's going to walk forward. And for some reason, she doesn't have an action in turn-based mode, even though I haven't done anything to consume her action, which is a little shitty. Uh, Dungan should be in range. He's gonna fire off the first shot of combat, dealing enough damage to kill that phase spider. He now has a surprise round, which I guess we just let go. I'm kind of hoping this guy teleports up to me. Oh, how perfect is that? Shadowheart's been pulled into combat. So is everyone else in our party as more webs get thrown at us. It looks like spiders aren't the only thing being thrown into this conflict. We also have an editor cap down beneath us who's infested with spider larvae. Well, it worked so well last time, I see no reason to change anything. Dungan fires off two hand, bow two hand crossbow shots, unfortunately. Not quite enough damage this time. Asarian is in combat, but I don't think he's going to be able to go this turn. Let's see. The Edder Cap on the far side of the room uses Dash to try to get closer to us. Look at how he climbed down the wall there. That is super intimidating. Shadowheart is in webbed, so she cannot move. She's gonna cast her Sacred Flame onto the spider at the, ooh, nice. The spider on the uh, web bridge in front of us. Lazelle's then going to try and use her bow to shoot the platform, although it's looking like I'm not gonna be able to do enough damage. Okay, that's fine. The spider itself then does five damage to Dungan with an acid attack. And Duncan's going to use one of his offhand shots to break the rope and make that spider die to fall damage. Two damage is all it took. Well, the main spiders of this conflict have already been dealt with. Duncan's going to move forward to the edge of his platform and try to land a shot on one of the Edder Caps. Unfortunately, that does not work out for us. The Edder Cap on the other side begins to move forward and casts Web on Shadowheart which is definitely slowing down our party's progress here. Granted, two of us are immune to web damage, but the other two certainly are not. Astarian's going to leap into battle using the strength in his legs to jump a very far distance. Now, oh, I swapped out his melee weapon, I guess, at some point, and I forgot. Okay, good. Uh, well, we're gonna swing. He's probably not gonna do crazy damage with this. No, only nine. But that is more than enough for right now. And with that Caustic Band, we're still getting a little bit extra DPS thrown in. Even with that weapon that doesn't belong to Astarian. Nine damage from the Sacred Flame. I feel really good about that. Lazel's going to walk forward and with her ranged weapon, put a little bit of damage into the Edder Cap here. I could get her off the high ground. I'm not super worried about the damage that these guys are dealing in the grand scheme of things, we should consider them the appetizer for today's main course. Good God, Dungan. That was 42 damage done in one turn. Oh my goodness. 
claws being used on Astari, and they do land true. He takes a bit of damage, but not before returning with a club swing of his own. Oh, I can't remember why I would have swapped his weapon out. I admittedly have been recording these episodes when I've been extremely tired. I'm still battling the sleep schedule boss. A brief respite. But I have no recollection on why I would have done that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We loot the spiders. Uh, anything good for me? A dead goblin child. Great. Maybe a starian could eat that. All right, before we fully jump to the next area that has even more face spiders in it, uh, I wanted to do a little recon with Dungan. So I'm going to break him off from the rest of the group. Dungan is very well equipped for this fight, and we should be able to make it even easier for the rest of our party if we are quick. Now, this is our boat. Things could go really bad, and if they do, I'm screwed. So let's hope that they don't. But if you haven't caught on to what we're doing yet, there's a really big face spider down here that is going to be attacking our party very, very soon. Let me get down and make sure this guy doesn't... Oh, they have sea invisibility. Holy crap. Okay, so I'm going to let this face spider go about its life. I might be able to kill it before the encounter even starts, and that might be a viable option. But see how it's patrolling around? It's protecting... A few eggs that are on the ground. These are phase spider eggs. And let's see how far his vision comes up here. Ooh! We are in that. We're in that. We're in that vision. Okay, go quick. In fact, I might even turn base mode really fast. Because what I would like Dungan to do is fire off. Oh, I don't like that. I'm going to turn off turn-based mode, I think. <gasps> okay. Okay. Well, we have some slight problems here, ladies and gentlemen. The spider has seen me do the task that I was trying to accomplish. Uh, right now, Dungan is the only one in combat, which is probably my only, only, only saving grace. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to get the rest of the party together and ready. That's, that's all we can do. Dungan's not in a terrible spot. He has two different misty steps. He has ways of getting out of that if he needs to. I'm not super, I'm not super duper worried about him. Uh, Astarian has his melee weapon in hand. He's going to break off from the rest of the party here and go around the Phase Spider Matriarch's vision. The Matriarch, by the way, is level five. That is serious. This is deadly. We're going to cut the rope, the, uh, the, the, the web that the boss was standing on. That's going to force the boss down to the bottom there. Um... Then we're gonna jump back to Dungan's POV. He's already attacked, I guess, so the only thing he can do is move away. And that's exactly what he is going to do. He's gonna try to get away from that face spider as fast as he can. He doesn't have any other actions right now, but that should help out quite a lot. The face spider went, the, the matriarch went first in the turn order, so we should be fine there. And just to be extra careful with Dungan, because I don't want him to get blown up, I am going to cast Sanctuary on him right now as well. This is going to make him immune to damage. And the idea here being like, hopefully that Sanctuary being there forces the Matriarch to then jump back up to the high ground here. Lazel's our only contender that has not been pulled into the turn order just yet. So I am going to start with a, if I can get the angle from here. It's saying I have to go all the way down. I don't feel like that should be the case. Uh, I wanted to get an arrow shot down there. If I do have to go down there, I guess that's not the end of the world. Uh, I'm going to wait. We're going to wait for Lazel. So whose turn is it is in, in combat right now? It's Dungans. We'll go ahead and finish his. One of the face spiders does teleport up top, and it sees our shadow heart off to the side. It looks like it tried to attack her. Yes, it did, but the attack did miss now it is Astarian and 
Shadow Hearts official turn. Starian's going to head down to the lower levels here. He has already done his action, but he does have another attack. So we're going to swing. That attack hopefully connected. But the rest of our turn, we are going to rage. Unfortunately, we did miss with that swing. We have a full set of actions here with Shadow Heart, and I think the only thing I'm gonna do is cast a Sacred Flame that's going to spawn a Radiating Orb under, or excuse me, over the Phase Spider that jumped up here onto the platform with us. Now, what we're seeing here are the Phase Spiderlings. These are a result of the big Matriarch Spider going over to a nest and waking everything up inside. Speaking of the Matriarch, she teleports up to the high ground and we're going to try a Warning Flare to protect Shadow Heart, but she takes 21 points of damage. We see more Venomous Discharges being shot at Astarian here. And Dungan is going to try to make his way up top. And by try, I mean Dungan will make his way up top. That's not the way I thought he was going to do it. He had to climb up first, huh? All right, the Misty Step puts us into position. And I am going to call on the powers of... Maybe we just do a discharge again? That might be hilarious. I don't know if we can actually send the Matriarch that far away. <gasps> You know what we could do? That would be insanely strong if it works. Go to sleep. Lazel's going to enter combat now. <laughs> she's going to pull out her big old weapon and she is going to place it into the brain of the face spider matriarch. That is a guaranteed critical hit on a sleeping target. And I like that quite a lot. We are also in position and ready for an attack of opportunity if things do go that way. Well, Dungan has done his turn. Uh, Shadowheart did get hit relatively hard. She is going to use one of her level two spells just to repair some of that damage to her health bar. Um, the Matriarch is awake. So maybe I should re-Sanctuary Dungan. I'm not that worried. I think we're doing great this fight, to be honest with you. I think we're quite a way ahead of where we normally would be here. Astarian, with all of his barbarian movement, should be able to make it up top as well, which sets him up for a Tiger's Bloodlust swing onto the Phase Spider Matriarch. We're making the attack reckless in an attempt to make it connect. Will it work? Yes, it will. Now the spider is bleeding. Uh, let's go ahead and bite it. I imagine you'll like that. Phase Spiders, I bet they're delicious. Maybe I should have bit first. Maybe I should have. Some of the little ads are starting to make their way over now, and they're not just scurrying, they are teleporting over as well. Lazelle has been put into a cocoon, and she is infested as she continues to take attack after attack after attack. We see a legendary action from the spider. I think it was a big poison attack. She laid all of that into a starion. Oh my god, yeah, he's taking some serious damage now. Holy shit, all of a sudden, this fight is getting out of hand very, very quickly. Um, Astarian's not in webbed. He's my best bet at actually killing these guys off. The face spider that goes after Dungan is asleep, so we don't have to worry about that damage. Dungan is going to use one of his slashing flourishes to try and kill off the face spider right here. This is a double attack. Not enough damage. But we do have a bonus action attack we can do now, too. Only a 25% chance to land. It hits for 10 damage. It is now Shadowheart's turn. Hmm. We could honestly just kill the spider. This little dude woke up again. So what if we do a... Scorching Ray, one to the Matriarch, two to the little dude. It did five damage. That wasn't enough to kill it. And then the fucking Matriarch followed up by enwebbing my Cleric. Okay. Uh, Astarian is going to swing and hit as many targets here as he can. He might even take half a step forward just to try and hit a third. It looks like we do hit three. Recklessly. Recklessly. It only hit two. He's then going to use his bonus action swing from Great, we Great Weapon Master. That does kill the Matriarch. Fantastic. And we're then gonna swing again on one of the little spiderlings. 
And then I'm going to crowd this other phase spider over on the far side. So two of our party is completely incapacitated, being enwebbed by this effect. Let me see what this is actually doing. This creature is entombed in infested spider silk and cannot move or take actions. Unless the silk is removed with acid or fire damage, it will explode. Okay. Uh, I'm... Okay. Uh, we're gonna have to figure that out really quick. I didn't think that shit was gonna explode. All right, Astarian ends his turn right there. We'll see how the rest of this goes. Some of these small little dudes are starting to make their way over towards us. Lazelle's currently still totally entombed. We see a teleport happening as one of these little dudes is making their way over to Dungan. Dungan, for his turn, is going to shoot a fire arrow at Lazelle and as well as these little spiderlings over here. Lazelle has been freed from her webby tomb. Uh, that was only my main action, so I still have a bonus, and I'm going to use it to shoot a hand crossbow shot at the nearest face spider. Uh, with the rest of my turn, I'm going to try to run away. This causes them to focus Shadow Heart here before one of the face spiders comes back into the previous room. Uh, we're going to see Astarian leap over the Matriarch's corpse, land immediately next to another of the face spiders, and just start ripping and tearing. Legs are going flying everywhere. He finishes off one of the enemies. And we end our turn. Uh, Lazelle is going to second wind. She's then going to pick up this small spiderling and toss it as far as she can throw it. <laughs> Through the fire and the flames. Uh, I then would very much like to free... Uh, Shadow Heart before she explodes. I just don't know if I can. Uh, let's see if we can throw this on our turn. Looks like we can. Perfect. Alchemist Fire to the back. My. There we go. We got it. Nice. So she took two damage instead of a potential 80 damage there. Now, Dungan on his turn has one more enemy left to take down, and it is behind him, the Phase Spider with 12 HP. He's going to take half a step forward and shoot the platform. Oh, it only did nine damage. Also, I think only some of that was to the Phase Spider. Uh, Warding Flare on Shadowheart is going to try to protect some of that HP as the Phase Spider dips into the shadows again. Shadowheart with two health remaining. It's going to cast... Oh. <laughs> I guess aid doesn't make sense. We'll do a level two heal. Take two. Just to make sure that fire does not kill me. And then we're going to walk forward in Sanctuary. I was hoping Sanctuary would get rid of the burning effect. It doesn't look like that was the case. Dungan, on his turn, is going to Misty Step back up to that high perch again. <laughs> He's now eye to eye with the face spider in front of him, and he is going to fire off a slashing flourish. And that's gonna do it. Okay, that was definitely the most tricky spider fight I have done in a while. What I was trying to show you guys at the beginning is that if you're stealthy, you can make your way around the platform and break all of the eggs. We actually got really lucky. There were two more egg clusters that could have spawned those little shits. And I think if those small little uh, face spider babies were actually in the fight, action economy could have gotten ahead of us there. It could have been pretty bad. It could have been really bad. No time to rest. Everyone is together, so I'm going to play a song of rest. At the same time, we are going to have... Shadowheart passed her level three aid for the day. You guys were saying that uh, aid isn't a heal. And you're right. Thank you for your comments. The reason I kept saying I can use it as a heal is because it does trigger the poison on the weapon of Astarian with Blue Mother's Revenge. So when I refer to aid as a heal, that's what I mean. I can get poison damage out of it. Okay. Let's see what the face spider has on their body. Anything for me that I might want. The poisoner's robes. When the wearer casts a spell that deals poison damage, it deals an additional one to four. I thought about making like this death and decay focus caster, and that is an item at the very 
top of the list for that build. A lot of these face spiderlings don't seem to have anything too interesting. Unfortunately, my party doesn't have slow fall, so I can't show you guys the normal party trick that I do. If you um, walk over this platform here and break it, I you will fall into the underdark. If you cast slow fall, you'll even survive that fall yeah. into the underdark. <laughs> It's one thing to get there. It's another thing to live to tell the story of how you got there. We saw a dark amethyst on the ground here, and I am in the market for XP. Oh, we didn't get much, did we? Oh my goodness. That dark amethyst can be taken to the Blighted Village, the same village that we've been rummaging through over the last few episodes. And inside this alchemist shop, there is a wooden hatch that leads down to the basement. If we take this, we can then find a secret lever on the wall that opens up a room into the back. Now, the reason I'm coming down here is the Dark Amethyst is a key needed for a very ancient text. If we unlock this now, it unlocks more stuff for us to do in Act 3. So I definitely want to make sure that we do it. And at this point, this shouldn't be very difficult for us to do. There's an ornate mirror. Speak your name. Um, tell him your name. I'm a starian. I do not know this name. If you are known to my master, step forward and declare yourself an ally. Uh, pick up a rock and smash the mirror. We need a 15 to do this. We will have guidance and bardic inspiration. Should be able to get that all day. That's a 26 on the dice. Starion reaches for the largest rock nearby. And helps himself in. Whoa, that skips the combat? Whoa! Impressive set of bones. <laughs> Pity to see it abandoned. There is a good item in this chest right here. Uh, the Bracers of Defense. Ups your AC. When you're not wearing any armor. Astarian is not wearing any armor. He is going to put on the Bracers of Defense. He now has 17 AC instead of the pitiful 15 that we've been dealing with this entire time. Uh, Dungan's going to break off from the rest of the pack and disarm this floor trap here. Now, Dungan isn't really good at anything that's uh, sleight of handy. Hey, Natty, 20 on that. But he does have Jack of all trades from being a bard, Beware. which means he's okay at it. We need a 15 for this. We got a 24 as another door pops open. And there's one more trap in there. Well, there's quite a few more if you don't break the pressure plate on the way in. That's our first seven. Trap disarm toolkit. Uh, wait, did it break? And that means that I have the book, The Necromancy of Bay. Now, in order to read this book, uh, where'd it go in my inventory? There it is. The book is locked tight with no visible keyhole. Only an oval recess in the cover's mouth. An oval recess, huh? I might know what you goes there. You try to there. examine the book, but the longer you stare, the more those piercing amethyst eyes draw you in. A cursed book. How obvious. Whoever opens it deserves it. <laughs> Curious. Why don't you take a closer look? I'll observe from back here. Well, the party it seems really into heavy. it. Why don't you let me carry it for you? Wait, Astarian wants to read it? Place the amethyst in the slot on the book's cover. What's funny is after all of this, I can just make him carry it. Carry my burdens like Lydia. Oh, young man, what have you done? Open the book. The book's pull is irresistible. You feel changed, bettered for having opened it. Suddenly, you are capable of anything. 
Felling mountains, darkening suns, conversing with the dead. Glyphs shift gently before your eyes. Words slip into your mind, onto your lips, forming words you don't understand. And something is trying to reply. Do we ch do we actually do this? Uh, bard performance. Trying out the voice with a verse. There was a young hero named Barry. Uh, seventeen. That was an easy DC. It was only five. Swarm impatiently. The book wants you to turn the page to delve deeper. It's hungry. Uh, who had best a tough quest? And not sorry. He was doing quite well till he fell under a spell. <laughs> I actually think these DC checks are easier as a bard. Oh my god, we hit that one perfect the with a ten. To burn your inner eye, outraged at your denial. Within the pages, you feel a feral thrashing. Living magic, driven mad by what it was used for. Necromancy. The magical energies of all living things were stolen, corrupted, and sealed in this vile book. It wants someone to share in its insanity. Mm, channel your magic into the final line. Now poor Barry's got a hag he must marry. Oh, shit. That's 15. We ha still have guidance. We rolled a 16. Your limerick's final line pierces something within the book's roiling, vengeful magic. The voices falter. The anger quells. The magic seems to grow still and quiet, like a soothed beast. Turn the page. Nothing. Just old parchment covered in arcane symbols. The magic sleeps. I feel like I wasn't supposed to have that option. Close the book. The heavy cover thumps shut with a strange finality. Now that I've seen the secrets, it won't open again. That's so cool, dude. That's so cool. Did I need to do that? No, dude. Am I better off after doing that? No, dude. <laughs> Bro, you know what sucks? I came all the way back up to the Risen Road. I was gonna kill the Paladin, since you know he gave us his weapon and he can't fight back anymore. I thought that'd be a good source of XP, but these guys totally cleared out. One of the reasons I wanted to help them is because they had a merchant that sold a bunch of arrows, but that merchant is totally gone. Well, I think that's probably going to wrap up today's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed our mini adventure. We have one more thing I still want to do inside of this part of the act, and it's located to the south. I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with it. After that, we're going to head towards the crash where we have a lot of really good items for our build left to find. That's going to do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you again very soon. I'm recording the next episode right now. 